I want you to understand the word ibadah in Arabic or ubudiyah, the, the masdar. It includes two things. If I translate them as one of those two things, it's incomplete. It's a limitation of, of English uh, as opposed to classical Arabic. Classical Arabic can, you know, combines many concepts at the same time. And so if we, if we just look at a partial translation or partial meaning of the concept, there's confusion left in the mind. The two terms that, in, that completely or comprehensively cover all aspects of ibadah or ubudiyah are two things. Those are worship and slavery. There are two terms, worship and slavery. A lot of times we either take worship or we take slavery, but there are two separate things in English, but they're combined in Arabic into the word ibadah and ubudiyah. So when, when the messenger says, لا أعبد ما تعبدون It doesn't just mean I will not worship. Also, I will not be enslaved to. I will not become a slave of. Very briefly, I'll remind you of the difference between worship and slavery. When Maghrib happened, we worshipped Allah. When Isha comes up, we will worship Allah. But in between the prayers, what are we? Slaves of Allah. When you're sleeping, you're not worshipping, but you're still a slave. When you wake up, when you're driving to work, brushing your teeth, eating your breakfast, you know, parking your car, even if you're not reciting Quran or you're, you're, not work, you know, you're not doing an act of worship, you are still what? A slave. In other words, worship is specific acts. The act of fasting, the act of praying, the act of making hajj, the act of reciting Quran, the act of giving sadaqah, these are acts of worship. But a slave is a slave all the time, whether he does those acts or not. This concept is very powerful. It means we, we are to live according to what Allah, how Allah wants us to live, not just in Jumu'ah during the khutbah, and when the salah is going on, we are enslaved to Allah in between the prayers too. حَافِلُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى In Salat al-Wusta, some commentary says it's between the prayers. Be connected to Allah too. You know what happens a lot of times? People worship Allah, but they still don't act like His slave. Somebody owns a liquor store, comes to the salah for five times. He worships Allah, but he's clearly not acting like what? A slave, he's not obeying Allah. And sometimes because we have these partial English definitions, you know what happens? We feel, we think to ourselves, hey, at least I worship Him. At least I worship Him, so I, my job is done. No, but you worshipped Him, but you're still not a abd of Allah. Worship is one part, slavery is the other. Ibadah includes both. Now the Arabs, they had two problems. There are two problems. They refuse to worship Allah, but you know what the bigger problem is? They refuse to be Allah's slaves. There are two problems in this surah. We have to make those problems distinct. The prob- the, when they refuse to bow down only to Allah and grid- get rid of all the idols, what is that a problem of? Worship or slavery? That's a problem of worship. But when they refuse to give the orphan, when they refuse to not kill the baby girl, when they refuse to not feed the poor, when they refuse to not give justice, when they refuse to kill without having right to do so, when they abuse the slave, when they do all of these things, what are they refusing to do? They're refusing to act like Allah's slaves. Being Allah's slave includes you worship Him and you act like His slave. Two things. So now understand the ayah. لا أعبدوا ما تعبدون لا أعبدوا I will not be enslaved to and I will not worship what you have been worshipping. Now we have to understand Allah, in this ayah, the messenger is being told to talk about what they worship and what they are slaves of. So what is it that they worship? And what is it that they're slaves of? They're worshippers of idols, false gods. And they are slaves of their own desires. Two things. They worship the idols. And they are slaves of their own selves, their own hawa, their own nafs. And the messenger says, I refuse to worship your idols, and I refuse to be enslaved to my own desires. I refuse both of those things. I am not, I'm never going to. Now, they, the, the mushrikun said, he's been rejecting our religion for a decade now almost. Let's give him a compromise, maybe the future. The Makkah has become pretty tense, you know. Always this confrontation between the Muslims and, non, and the kuffar. Let's make a compromise, life will become better. 
we'll, we're willing to accept your religion for a year and you accept our religion the next year and then we'll come back to yours this next year and we'll all share I mean, in other words we all share Islam for a season then we'll all share shirk for a season and if we compromise things will get better there won't be any tension in Mecca anymore so our future will be better La a'budu according to most grammarians the la on the mudara actually more than present illustrates the future in other words the messenger says don't have your hopes up I am not going to. It's never going to happen. I will never, if you're thinking the future is going to be softer on you, I will never worship and I will refuse to be enslaved to whatever you worship and you are enslaved to. That is never going to happen. Get that out of your head.